So there's a 10 minute tutorial that shows you how to make this rainbow texture. Now what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to use this texture in conjunction with a product made by Horo and myself which is available here. If you go to Bryce Tutorials dot info Bryce Downloads down this list you will find the Bryce 7 Scene to HDRI Backdrop Converter which is a bit of a mouthful. I just call it the Scene Converter and this allows you to take an entire Bryce scene and turn it into a 360 by 180 uh, angular mapped HDRI backdrop. We're just going to use it in a very simple way here and I can you know, demonstrate how it's all going to work. So uh, from the product I'm going to use the hybrid scene converter but any of the three scene converters would do and I'm going to load it in here and this is how it looks when you load it as default and it's just showing you how it's mapping the scene. We don't have to worry about the technicalities of that, there's plenty of tutorials that come with the product. I'm just going to use it. So I'm going to create a default sphere. I'm going to enlarge that sphere so it's sitting inside the scene converter. I'm going to modify the material. I'm going to use the ambient channel. I'm going to go hold the shift key down and get hold of the texture that we made in the other tutorial, which was in this uh, one category for it, rainbow texture. and uh, I'm going to use spherical mapping and I'm going to set it at 10% which means it will provide one full spectra all the way around. Turn the ambient up, turn the diffuse down. So you can see that's now lit with ambient. Go into the sky and fog tab there and make sure we've got ambient to drive the effect and it's at full value. Then switch to the perspective camera and render and inside the circle is our angular mapped image and this when it's been rendered will go to file and export image and go rain rainbow HDRI and save it in HDR format and so now I've captured that I've prepared a scene a very simple scene this is the Stanford Dragon that uh, came from the Stanford repository that uh, Graham Dretch provided me with and this is going to be the subject of the scene and I'm going to light it with the HDR I've just created. So I'm going to sky and fog, go into the Skylab, image based lighting, use HDRI, open, navigate to where I've saved my HDRI image in HDR format, load that in, you can see it looks the same now. I can use render in scene, right, and you can see as yet it's not producing much light, so I'll increase the value of the light coming from the probe. Right, what I want to do, because of the way this scene was captured, it favours having a good quality of information uh, above the horizon. I need to reorientate it so that this point here is back at the apex. And to do that, I need to set the yaw to 180, the pitch to zero, and the roll to 180. And now, I'm just going to lower the quality so it speeds the render time because we're using direct lighting and because I've loaded HDRI the sunlight's been disabled we can see in this scene that the summation of the light arriving from the rainbow as you might imagine where the light reaches all surfaces adds up to white or in this case grey because there's not that much of it and otherwise then because the shadow casting of the discrete light sources it covers out certain parts of the spectrum and leaves rainbow coloured shadows and it also has the effect of uh, colouring the, the dragon on certain sides so this is this is quite interesting in a way I think um, but we, we can utilize the pattern still further not just with the light source I'm just uh, repositioning the camera slightly so we can focus on the the model and see what's really going on there right so the next phase then for this uh, short video is we're going to look at using the now we've got multicolored light sources arriving from the HDRI that was generated with the rainbow pattern. We're going to modify the material properties of the dragon itself. So if I go in here to the material lab for the dragon, I'm going to use um, diffuse and then hold down the shift key and find the pattern. So where was it? Um, here we go. And it's decided to parametric map. We could try spherical mapping to start with, and uh, I'll set the value to 20. 
so that is as it had been stored because it had loaded in another texture component as I explained in the previous video it brings in its own mapping mode and scaling factor so let's have a look how that looks because those certain colors are now going to respond to the colors that are being provided from the backdrop I'm not sure spherical mapping was the right choice there I'm going to try a reflection map see what happens there ah, that's a little bit more interesting now um, the other thing that I mentioned doing was controlling the effects uh, of the anisotropy which is a vector from the colors of this so if we use that and we control the specular color with the the pattern as well so these are all color controls and not alpha controls the anisotropy unlike these is controlled well the bump height is controlled by the um, height map displacement doesn't work it just crashes it would be nice if it did work these are controlled by alpha and this one's controlled by color and it's a vector so we can now control the specular effect from that but you can't see any difference in this render yet and the reason for that is that HDRIs don't generally produce a lot of specularity in the effect channel but you can force them to but you have to jiggle with the values a bit so if we turn the specularity right up even the preview can't see much difference if we apply to light source it makes the intensity a scaling value for the specularity effect and now you can see things are happening so if we set the diffuse down to zero we can look at a specular response here so the specular response is makes things look like they're either plastic or metallic because it's a sort of low cost um, effect to create the illusion of reflection so we can turn that up it is given a bit of a metallic effect and then we can add a bit of diffuse back in as well if I can get the right control I don't need to add very much diffuse because it's being it is also being scaled up by the effect from the intensity here and, uh, and using this little uh, control here which is difficult to hit apply to light source so now we've created quite a dramatic effect with the uh, the light source and uh, we can change the response because the colors are arranged around in the spectrum even though it's been burned out in this preview if we hold the control key down now it should oh, it should allow us to rotate this your value without affecting the other values so we then have the the option of rotating the HDRI backdrop and you can see it's having quite a radical effect on the appearance of the dragon so I don't know which one I like best I'll just try over here, quite like that moving towards sort of the ready end of the spectrum let's try a little bit more effect from the specularity Oop, that's probably might be a bit strong that I'll try 35 there on the intensity is that scaling up the specularity as well and the last consideration really if uh, if we like that particular combination just letting it render or indeed there is nothing to stop you from uh, going in and uh, moving this you don't have to hold the control key down you can you set this in any orientation you want really it's entirely up to you and you can even type in discrete values like uh, that for example which I was uh, looking at earlier and uh, yeah you know the, you offset the eff the effect of the of the intensity of the specularity against the HDR effect so by increasing the intensity value here the effect is scaled up with the specularity is scaled up that's quite uh, quite a bit over the top I think there actually though I don't know I quite like that so it, for final rendering then if you have a look at what you've got and you say well I want the final rendered image of this you've got these discrete shadow regions and uh, the individual light sources that are stimulating the specularity effect are also controlled by the quality so we could set it up to the default setting and then see uh, how long that's going to take to render and how bad the shadow banding effect is underneath so it's not really a very long render time possibly it's is a bit of bit of uh, over the top this effect but uh, it sort of demonstrates the things that can be done with uh, with fairly simple texture components and uh, you know in, in a short time so I'll just uh, I'll just let this render out and call that it uh, so there's a way of using the rainbow texture component to create a complete lighting environment with the correct tools obviously 
and also use it within that environment on a model to respond to the colours from that environment to drive the anisotropic effect. So it really encompasses quite a lot of different features just using one simple component to uh, to control them all which yeah well, I like the idea of getting a lot out of not very much so that then is the uh, the end of the tutorial I can see that it's got its AA pass so I'll just pause this and uh, I'll let it render out there then is the final uh, rendered image and the end of the tutorial